but I hope it works. Uh, let me see. Hi guys, my name is Vivian and I will be doing the teach one for the Charleston's concept for half 464. And so we're going to be talking about four things today. Um, first, what is the Charleston's index and why it's so important? Next, we'll be talking about the Dales and Romano's Charleston's index. And then we'll be doing task one and task two that are the assignments. So what is the Charleston's index? The Charleston's comorbidity index is a method of categorizing comorbidities, which are the presence of one or more additional conditions, often co-occurring with a primary condition of patients based on the International Classification of Disease Diagnosis Codes. So basically what this index does is it puts different um, categories of different conditions that someone may have that would cause someone to have a higher mortality rate. So for example, having diabetes, having a heart disease, having high blood pressure, these different common, the, um, common categories of these are what is like categorized. And so the purpose of this index is to predict the risk of death within groups of people. For example, most likely they're hospital patients in a year. So each of these categories has an associated number with them, and the number is based off of a mortality rate. So if it's assigned 1, it means that it doesn't really have um, a really bit of big effect on mortality, but if it's weighed as a 6, it has a really high mortality rate. And so on your left is an example of the Charleston Comorbidity Index. As you can see, there are scores which go from 1 to 6. And to get your Charleston's index score, you would basically determine the condition that someone may have. For example, for someone who might be like the age 50 or so, they might have some blood pressure disease or some like chronic pulmonary disease. And so for that, you would add up the different scores or you would add up the different numbers that they get and add up the score. So the higher the sum, the higher mortality is the result of these conditions that someone may have. So later on, in 1992, um, Deo creates a newer version of the comorbidity index, which basically predicts long-term survival instead of mortality. So instead of having 19 different categories, it gets switched to 17 different categories based on the various chronic medical conditions at the time. So with more time, there are more medical discoveries, and so more of these categories became less significant and didn't have a really high mortality rate. So we were able to take out some and to just have 17 categories. Next, we have the Romano's version of Charles's indexes which came in to around like the late 1990s and basically created like these ICD-9 diagnoses derived from Charleston's conditions and they're they are basically what we see today as ICD-9 diagnoses that you see in the hospital. So basically with this they took all of the conditions and they were able to basically put it online into like a database and they were able to improve score accuracy within hospitals. And so on your right, you see that right here, you see that um, the mortality rate is a little more different. It's a little more precise than what you saw in the beginning. So with this, you're allowed to create calculations just by using the hospital's administrative data. And so for the first task, here are the different assignments. It's all written in one sentence. But basically, we were able to put it into three parts. So first, you're supposed to find the original Charleston, Deo's version of Charleston's, and the Romano's version of Charleston's indexes. Um, my biggest hint to you is to use your resources. There's a lot out there on Google, on PubMed, um, on the library that Mason has that you use your money for. And just look up these different indexes, and there's a lot to find. The second part was for each index, it identify how many articles have cited this work. And again, my hint is to use Google Scholars because they have a way to identify how many um, articles have 
cited Charleston's index, and it's really important to know that because this is a really important topic, and to be credible, you would have to have a lot of work cite this and make sure that it is credible and it's realistic and that it is legit. And then part three is to describe the number of diagnoses used by each one of these approaches, um, which index best predicts mortality rate. Again, use Google and kind of use the different um, the different information that I had just talked about earlier. This will kind of help infer which um, index best predicts mortality rate. So go ahead and pause right here, do as much as you can, and then I will see you back for the next slide. Welcome back. Um, if you found your answers, congrats, here are some ways that you can compare your answers to. And again, if you don't agree with them, let me know and I can explain to you best how I found these answers. So first, you're supposed to find the original Charlesons and indexes. I won't lie, it may vary because there are so many different um, pictures of it, but the pictures should look very similar to the ones from the previous slides like I showed you in the slides. For the second part, for each index, identify how many articles have cited the work. Your answer should be very similar to this. I based it off of looking it up on Google Scholars and then finding the actual individual who actually wrote the index. And I did that because I knew that this was the original work and that the person, or Charleston, if they were the ones that wrote it or if it was Deo or Romano, that's when I knew it was realistic and that it was credible. And so from that, I am able to cite this. And you can see the citing is a little wonky, but it is realistic, and because um, Romano's was so recent, it has less citations rather than Charleston's or the Deo's index. And so for part three, we learned from the previous slides that Charleston's has 19 numbers of diagnoses, while Deo's and Romano's have 17 each. And from the information that we learned previously, I best inferred that Romano's um, best predicts more mortality rate because first of all it was the most recent index that um, interpreted from Charleston's index and because of that we're able to receive a lot more accurate information about mortality rate. And so the second task now is to use the ICD codes, list out all the codes that correspond to these diagnosis codes shown below. And so basically what we're going to do now is create an Excel sheet which all with all of these different codes that best describes these categories. And so first you're gonna go onto the wiki page that is provided for you, but if you can't find it, I've also hyperlinked it right there where you see. And so you're gonna review these ICD-9 codes. Next, you're gonna copy and paste that, um, this little thing, the categories into the Excel and then reformat to make it look a little bit nicer. So as you can see here, this looks exactly like what was shown in slide nine or two slides ago. Next, you're going to first find the first part, which is the myocardial infarction on the Wikipedia, which is 410. And within 410, you have a bunch of other ICD-9 codes, which are very specific. And so you're gonna create, first create space onto Excel, like what you see in this GIF, so that we have space to put all of this onto the left on inside our Excel sheet. Next, you're gonna copy and paste this into Word and you're gonna remove unnecessary information. So like what you see here in this video, I'm going to copy it, take it back to a Word blank Word document and then you're going to keep the text only. This is really, really important because you're able to not have the copy and paste look like what is shown on the actual website, but it will take out all the formatting and you're able to just get text itself so you'll have no hyperlink, which makes it really easy to kind of remove all the unnecessary information. So from here, as you can see what I'm doing, I am removing all the unnecessary information because we only want the code. So we're gonna convert the text to the table. And so by doing that, we are able to 
make it into a table. So with this, you can take out the right side of the table and remove it so that it takes out at least half of all of our information. And then next, you will do find and find replace. So with this ability, you are able to find specific words and then replace it with other words. In this case, I just left the bottom side as blank so that it would just remove it entirely. So I click replace all and it made 11 replacements. And so I will keep doing that until I just have the numbers itself. Sometimes it doesn't always work and it's different for each category that you do, but you always want to find something that is similar to everything that you're able to um, basically differentiate the numbers and the words. And so this wasn't the best way to do it. I did figure out a different way, but I do challenge you to try to look for that. So from that, I copied it. And then if we go into the next slide, we are going to paste. We are going to paste it, paste special, and then paste it just as text. So with that, all the numbers will come up. And so this will allow mm -hmm. the codes not to be messed up. By doing this, you will go to paste special and then just paste it with just text and nothing else, no formatting. So you also have to do that because if you paste it regularly, it will remove the ending decimals and it will make it a different diagnosis code. The numbers after the zeros are very very important and that's how you differentiate the different diagnosis codes next you'll repeat it for the next diagnosis and so forth a few key notes is to make sure you unformat um when you copy and paste it into your word make sure you're unformatting it because this will make it again a lot more easier to get just the diagnosis number and so you only need the diagnosis code, delete everything using insert, table, convert text to table. Make sure to only use the diagnosis that are assigned, take out everything else. I do want to emphasize that a lot because this saves you a lot of time. And when creating tables in Word, think about what they all have in common to get rid of everything after the code. And I will show you another example here. So in this case, I'm working on 425. I copy it. And then I will paste it and I'll keep the text only. Next, I will actually look up the different words before the numbers and replace it with just blanks. And so next I realize when I am changing it from a table to or changing the text to the table is that everything that they have in common is literally a blank. So what you do in this place is that you will put, you will literally click the space button. And so because you do that, you click OK, and then it'll make this really weird table. But as you can see, the number is differentiated from all the words here. So what you'll do next is you'll copy all of these tables and just delete them. This makes it so that you literally only have the numbers. Like, it's so easy. And so from there, you'll copy and paste it, and you'll put it into your Excel. And I kind of explained everything as I said, and then you just insert it back into Excel, and by doing that, you click Special Paste, and then you click Text. And so the final look, you should have 328 lines of data, including the lines with the word category or Darth Mouth Manitoba ICD-9 codes. Peptid ulcer disease should be your last category listed as it is the last one on slide 9. And if you've gone this far and you have this number, congrats, you have done it. If not, let me know. I am always available. And then if you have more, you might have added more than you need. Check the assignment. Good luck.